Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am announcing something that I am nervous to do, excited to do, I feel is important to do. Whew, can you tell I'm nervous filming this? So, as we all know, at the moment we are currently in the grip of the worst global pandemic um, in recent years. I wouldn't say in living memory, but definitely in recent years. Um, our way of life has completely changed in the last month. Everyone is having to deal with not just the fear of getting sick, but you know, we're not going to work as normal, our kids aren't going to school as normal, we can't move around as normal, we can't do anything as normal. Um, and it's been a, a really scary time, and I have touched on it a little bit in my previous videos, but I've generally tried to keep my online space um, kind of free of that kind of discussion because it felt, it, or it feels important to give people a space where they can come just to hang out and switch switch off from all the scary stuff in the world and just spend a bit of time in the world of books. However, um, as we are now, what, like five weeks into this, six weeks into this, I've honestly lost track of the days and weeks. Um, I have definitely found myself m more settled in the last week or 10 days. And I'm very lucky that that is the case because I know loads of people are still really struggling. But back a few weeks when this was kind of all starting to gather pace, um, I was definitely struggling with mental health. And I think I said it on Twitter, like I felt like I was going through the grief cycle. I was really angry and then I was scared and then I was bargaining um, and then sort of going to a place of almost accepting the situation and then cycling back through. And that was happening on an hourly or daily basis. Um, that has now stopped, thankfully, for which I'm very grateful. I think being able to work from home has really helped because I've, Gary and I have been able to establish a routine here and I don't have to leave my home um, except to get food and for our daily walks, but I, I'm no longer having to take the risk of driving into the centre of a big city every day and going to the office. So I think that's massively helped me. And one of the things that's done has left me with the space to think about how we can help, which is what this whole thing is about is helping or trying to help and this has all happened very quickly um, I was chatting to Leanne from Literary Diversions literally a week ago today that I'm filming this and I just had a vague half-formed thought and I mentioned it to her and now here I am announcing basically a charity readathon is what we're doing um, so I saw that the bloggers led by Fleur de Force had um, got together and they were auctioning off loads of their own stuff you know designer bags and that kind of thing to raise money for an NHS charity which I thought was amazing and they've raised a lot of money I think it's still going on now um, and so I said to Leanne I said is anyone in the book community doing anything like this at the moment because I want to join in a friend of mine who's got an Arbonne business has raised 300 pounds to be able to send um, hand creams and like nutritional supplements to her local hospital which I thought was brilliant I donated to that and it was that thought of like okay the bloggers have done something are the booktubers doing anything? Like, it's the only thing I can join in with. And Ian came back, had a look around, because she knows everything and everyone. Um, and she said, no, I can't find anything. And I said, well, shall we do it? And a whirlwind of a week later, here we are. So, the readathon is called Books for the Brave, as you'll have seen from the title of this video, um, which is not a name that I can take credit for. Gary named it. Um, he's becoming the master of naming things. He also named my book club. Uh, so it's called Books of the Brave. It'll be running from the 11th to the 17th of May. I have got two amazing co-hosts. I and mean, I really can't believe that I'm sat here telling you who I've got co-hosting. We did also have a fourth member of our gang who I won't name because I don't know how they'd feel about it. But they were very much part of forming this readathon and taking it from one of my half-baked vague ideas into an actual thing for us to present to you. Um, they have decided not to host because they don't feel capable at the moment which all the rest of us absolutely support them in doing but it didn't feel right to film this video without at least mentioning um even without naming them the fourth person who has helped create this readathon so thank you to that person and also i'm glad that you spoke up and said that you weren't feeling capable because you need to look after yourself first that's always always the first thing and i'm really glad that you let us know how you're feeling and hopefully you'll be feeling better soon um so yes like i said there are three of us be myself leanne from Liter literary diversions and emma from drinking by my shelf i'm so excited to be working with the these two absolutely amazing women 
Um, this was originally my half-baked I half baked idea, as I said, but Leanne was kind enough to A, not laugh at me, and B, help actually be practical on what we needed to do. Um, she's also designed us an amazing logo, and um, as I'll mention in a minute, she'll also be donating some of her bookmarks and her stickers as prizes, which is just like so wonderful um and then she got in touch with emma and emma agreed to come on board and has been so like excited and energetic about the whole thing and i'm so like pleased and proud to be telling you guys about this so as i said it's a readathon for one week we do have three reading prompts um there will also be on in over on instagram there will be um a photo challenge each day there will be prizes um we're gonna do kind of um, a scavenger hunt kind of thing through some videos and there will be like spot prizes and that kind of thing so it's gonna be really interactive and really fun but it's also to raise some money so we have picked the charity NHS charities together um, and we have set a target of a thousand pounds that is what we would like the book community to come together and help us to raise we've set up a just giving page everything that you need will be linked in the description of this video um, we've set up a just giving page which is live right now you can go and donate there right now if you want to um and to tie it in with the readathon what we're asking is that you donate the cost of the book that you're reading that week or as much as you can the minimum donation cost on just giving is two pounds if you're a uk taxpayer you can also do gift aid which will top up your donation um so anything you can give would be really really welcome um but to kind of link it into books we are asking that you donate the cost of the book that you're reading in the week um Obviously, given that we're fundraising for the NHS, it's a very kind of UK focused charity drive that we're doing. However, if you're international and you want to help, um, you can donate on Just Giving. It will take pretty much any currency in the world and you'd be very, very welcome. Any pound or any whatever currency it is, anything you can put in will massively, massively help. The charity that we've chosen is one that supports the frontline workers. It looks after um, NHS staff and their mental well-being and supports them in loads and loads of important ways and that's always important to do but especially at a time where they are just doing the most incredible job they are people who are putting themselves in the firing line day after day to look after the you know the sickest people in our communities and also to protect the rest of us from getting ill several of my friends are frontline staff and watching what they're going through at the moment is genuinely heartbreaking and I'm actually getting a little bit like tearful thinking about them um they need our support and they need our help and there's been a lot online in the last week or so saying you know the NHS is not a charity people shouldn't have to be fundraising and I absolutely agree and I just want to make it clear all three of us absolutely agree with that statement we shouldn't have to be doing this but the last 10 years of government have systematically been pulling bits off the NHS and paring it down and paring it down. And now we're in a situation where we have got a serious epidemic going on and the people who need the help so that they can help fight it is not there. And I think it's absolutely awful that we are having to do this, but the fact is we do. And in this time where this is going on, right now we just need to help. And then once this is over, because it will be over at some point, there will be an end to this and it will be over. And at that point, we need to be pushing for answers and for change. And there are people that need to be held very much accountable. But in the meantime, I think it's unfair to put more pressure on those people on the front line by not helping just because we shouldn't have to. And I hope that makes sense. Um, we are here to try and help. This is what this is all we're trying to do is to try and help, try and do something. And this is the best way that we could think is to ask for you guys to help us raise this money so that we can help the people who are helping the rest of us. So if you can donate, please do. I would never normally ask for money. Um, and this community, I've been on the internet for probably 12 years. Um, Showing my age, I was one of the first people to have a Facebook account way back in the day. Um, I've been online a long time and I've been part of lots of different communities and the book community is the best community that I've ever been a part of. And we are so good at supporting each other, at lifting each other up, um, at coming together 
<laughs> just dropped my notes, that's professional, because I'm waving my hands around. Um, we are the best at coming together, and if we could harness that and use it to put something good outwards into the world, that has to be worth doing and it has to be worth a try. So please help us, whatever you can donate would be very gratefully received. Okay, on to the prompts. Now obviously, this is gonna be on an honour system. We cannot and will not be policing who's donated and who's taking part in the readathon. However, to win any of the prizes, you will have to show that you have donated something um, to kind of qualify to win prizes. But here are the prompts. So we've got three. It's only a week long readathon, so we kind of tried to keep it as simple as, as we could. So the first prompt, as we are sort of focusing on books for the brave, is to read a book that intimidates you. That could be for any reason. It could be the length of it. It could be that you're not sure of the author. Um, it could be that you've maybe heard some, you know, slightly dodgy reviews. Whatever it is, that book that's on your TBR that intimidates you, we want you to pick it up that week. Um, prompt number two is to read a book that starts with N, H or S. Um, that can be in the title or in the author's name. We thought that was quite a good way to link it in and it leaves it quite broad, any genre you like, as with the previous one. And then the third prompt is to read a book with a brave main character. And again, that leaves it open for all the genres. You can use one book for all three prompts, you can read different books, do it however you like. I am also co-hosting co Mental Healthathon through the whole of May and this running this project does absolutely not impact that at all. I will still be fully present for Mental Healthathon, I'm really excited about it. I have decided on my books for this week and one of them is an extra one to my um, Mental Healthathon TBR but the others I'm linking in with my TBR for that. So if you're doing other readathons, yes, you are absolutely more than welcome to link in books and that, that is not a problem. Um, like I said, we will also be running a week long Instagram challenge. So you need to look out for that. And also during the week itself, all three of us will be posting one video during that week. I will be going first on the Monday, followed by Leanne on the Wednesday and then Emma on the Friday. And then on the Sunday, uh, we will be doing a live show, the three of us, be my first time. I'm very nervous. Um, but we're doing a live show over on Emma's channel just to wrap everything up, um, announce some prizes. Um, throughout the three, three videos that will be um, coming to you in the week, one from each channel, we'll also be doing a scavenger hunt, so keep an eye out for that. I will explain the rules of that uh, as I open my video on the Monday. And I think that's everything. Let me just check my little notes just to make sure. Yeah, that's, that's everything that I have to tell you. So, like I said, we are trying to do something positive to try and help the people that need help right now. And we're really, really hoping that you will get behind us and help us to reach that target. Um, this week, uh, or this weekend, just gone, um, a book was released with a load of thank you letters from celebrities and various famous people to the NHS. This is our love letter to the NHS and we really hope that you will join in with us. So please leave me a comment below, let me know if you'd be joining in and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys, bye.